Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have a small topic in surgery. The biopsy. Biopsy is nothing but a surgical procedure where a part of the lesion will be surgically taken out and it will be sent for further examination. So when we have very uh, inconclusive diagnosis or we are not sure about uh, a lesion we always opt for biopsy so biopsy will in most of the cases it will reveal the true nature of the lesion so let's learn biopsy and its procedures so definition of biopsy it is a, a surgical procedure to obtain tissue from a living organism for its microscopical examination, usually to perform a diagnosis. So when we should go for biopsy? When we have a suspicion about a lesion, whether it is a malignant or it has some uh, malignant potential, we should go for biopsy on red and white lesions. So certain red and white lesions have the uh, potential to become malignant lesion. So such cases we should think of biopsy. Then ulceration, when uh, there is um, ulceration on the lesion, when there is a duration that is if the lesion is persisting without healing more than two weeks or if the lesion which exhibits very rapid growth rate or if it has bleeding on gentle uh, palpation and if the lesion and surrounding tissue is firm to the touch or if the lesion is uh, attached to the adjacent structures so all these cases we should go for biopsy for its final uh, confirmation and on what conditions uh, we should not Think of biopsy if the patient is on anticoagulant therapy or if uh, there is overwhelming sepsis and if the patient has some uh, impaired lung function in case of uncontrolled bleeding and if the patient is non-cooperative and if a local infection is present at the lesion site we should not go for biopsy. So what are the objectives of biopsy? It is mainly to confirm a diagnosis which was made on the clinical findings to determine the treatment plan and to keep as a medical record. So these are the objectives of biopsy. Now let's move on to the classification of biopsy. So basic types are surgical biopsy fine needle aspiration cytology, exfoliative cytology, brush biopsy. In surgical biopsy, we have incisional biopsy, excisional biopsy and punch biopsy. Okay, and there are many other types of biopsies uh, such as frozen section biopsy, cone biopsy, core needle biopsy, laser biopsy. So we are focusing only on these four and the three categories of surgical biopsy. So what are the steps of biopsy? The first one is uh, selection of the area of biopsy, then preparing this surgical field, then applying local anesthesia, doing, uh, giving the incision, then handling of specimen. Finally, after uh, the specimen taken out, we need to suture the resulting wound. The first one is incisional biopsy. So incisional biopsy are indicated when there is size limitations and if there is hazardous uh, uh, location when the lesion is uh, very close to vital structures and we have great suspicion of malignancy. So if this red color is the lesion, we take a part of it and a part of normal tissue. Okay, so all these blank area is normal tissue you assume it as normal tissue so we take a part of the lesion and a part of normal tissue okay just like this 
these are all normal tissue and only this part is a lesion so we take a part of the lesion and a part of normal tissue that is incisional biopsy when we have a great suspicion of malignant changes we should never go for excisional biopsy we should take just a part of the lesion and adjacent lesion so the technique is uh, it is like a wedge uh, fashion we need to cut the uh, lesion and margins should extend into the uh, normal tissues and uh, the we should avoid the necrotic tissues so a narrow and deep specimen okay so a narrow and deep specimen rather than a, a broad and flattened uh, broad shallow one is not preferred a narrow deeper one is preferred rather than a broad and shallow one okay so this is always preferred rather than broad and shallow one so that is incisional biopsy so incisional biopsy uh, it should extend from the ulceration out onto clinically normal tissues so clinically normal tissue also should be included in the specimen so if it is uh, excisional biopsy uh, before that uh, we need to uh, learn the disadvantages of incisional biopsy uh, for incisional biopsy there could be crash splits and hemorrhages are the problems which are more uh, frequently found in this type of biopsies there will be severe hemorrhage there will be splits and there will be crush of the tissues and theoretically it will result in seeding of cancer cells into the adjoining tissues so seeding of cancer cell to the adjoining tissues when we do a procedure it might result in spreading the cancer on, on a theoretical ground so that was about incisional biopsy excisional biopsy it implies a complete removal of the lesion if this black this green is a lesion we take a specimen with surrounding normal tissue and the complete lesion okay so it is a biopsy which involves the complete removal of lesion so it is always employed with smaller lesion when there is lesions which is less than one centimeter so the lesion on clinical examination appears benign so mostly we go for excisional biopsy on benign lesions so when complete excision with a margin of normal tissue is possible without mutilation of the tissues so in that case only we should go for excisional that is benign lesions smaller lesions we should go for excisional malignant lesions suspected malignant lesions and bigger lesions we should think of incisional biopsy so excisional biopsy technique is the entire lesion with 2 to 3 mm of normal adjacent tissue is uh, excised uh, it is most commonly uh, used in mucosal mucosal is excisional biopsy now we have punch biopsy so punch biopsy uh, it is like we know punched out lesions it will be like this punched out lesions so it is a procedure in which small round piece of tissue about a size of pencil uh, is removed using a sharp hollow circular instrument okay so a circular scalpel it will be a circular scalpel usually the scalpel will be like this okay so we use a circular scalpel used to cut into a lesion on the skin and the instrument is turned clockwise and anti-clockwise and to cut down about 4 millimeter to the layer of fatty tissue below the dermis so a small sample of tissue is removed to be checked under uh, further um, histological examination so it is punch biopsy so instead of a normal scalpel we use a circular scalpel that is 
punch biopsy so these are the surgical biopsy surgical procedures okay now let's uh, go to FNAC the fine needle aspiration cytology so before that we need to uh, learn the advantage of punch biopsy it is very easy technique sutures uh, may not be required if it is a very small uh, diameter and it may produce a more satisfactory specimen and it is commonly used in hard palate hard palate drawbacks it might not give adequate uh, tissue for biopsy and it may be difficult to uh, biopsy a freely mobile tissues such as uh, soft palate and floor of the mouth we need a very hard structures uh, such as uh, gingiva or hard palate to take a circular scalpel because the tissues to be very firm uh, if it is uh, movable uh, we may not be uh, able to taking a proper punch biopsy so now we have uh, fine needle aspiration uh, cytology so fine needle aspiration cytology is a technique of aspirating cells or fluids or tissue fragments using a fine needle for examination under microscope so the fine needle aspiration that is aspirational biopsy indicated to determine the presence of fluid within a lesion or to determine the type of fluid within a lesion and to explore uh, the intraosseous lesion okay so the procedure is 18 uh, gauge needle is connected to a 5 or 10 ml syringe and is inserted into the center of the mass using a small hole in the lesion so if it is a lesion we create a small hole here and then we put our needle into it so the tip of the needle may not uh, be positioned properly so we need to uh, keep at multiple directions to locate a potential fluid center okay then the material withdrawn using aspiration biopsy and it will be submitted for examination and if we are in unable to we are not able to um, withdraw fluid or we are getting air which indicates that the lesion is probably solid and if we have a radiolucent lesion in the jaw that gives a straw colored fluid straw colored fluid means it is a cyst and if we get pus uh, then there will be a inflammatory or infectious process and if we are getting blood that is the aspiration is giving blood it indicates a vascular malformation within the bone so any intra bony radiolucent lesion should be aspirated before surgical intervention to rule out a vascular lesion so if the lesion is determined to be vascular in nature the flow rate should be determined because when we go for a surgical procedure uh, this flow rate is uh, very much important because if we don't know the flow rate there will be uncontrollable hemorrhage so if you are going for a intraosseous uh, surgical procedures FNAC would be very much helpful to make out or rule out the vascular malformation within the bone so advantages are it is painless it produces speedy results inexpensive technique with uh, use of very little equipment is required which can be done as an outpatient or a bedside there is no problem with wound healing and it is readily repeatable and it is commonly indicated in non palpable lesions or area difficult to be biopsied to rule out any vascular lesions prior to open surgery in case where biopsy is contraindicated on medical background used as a diagnostic screening test for head and neck uh, various masses indicated for non tumors to assess the effect of treatment so these are the indications for FNAC and now we have exfoliative cytology so exfoliative cytology is not actually a biopsy method it is an adjunct it cannot be 
used as a substitute for any surgical biopsy incisional or excisional it can be used as an adjunct along with uh, this incisional and excisional biopsy okay so in exfoliative cytology so it is uh, as i mentioned it is used as an adjunct not as a substitute so it is examination of individual cells okay so the problem is it cannot provide the histological feature which is very vital for a uh, definitive diagnosis it uh, developed as a diagnostic screening procedure it is mainly for screening procedure to monitor large tissue areas of dysplastic changes so lesions uh, that lend themselves to cytological examination includes uh, basically herpes uh, infection fungal infection uh, pemphigus or post radiation changes of tissues so all this can be done under exfoliative cytology so procedure is uh, the lesion is scraped repeatedly and firmly with a moistened tongue depressor or cytology brush so the cells are then transferred to and smeared evenly on a glass slide the slide is immediately immersed in a fixing solution and the cells later can be stained and studied so the advantage is it may be helpful when large areas of mucosal changes are noted or in areas with difficult surgical access but the disadvantage uh, uh, is not very reliable because it gives so many false positive false positives false positive is nothing but uh, giving a false diagnosis and uh, we don't have many expertise in oral cytology that is another problem so that is fine needle aspiration cytology and the last one is brush biopsy brush biopsy is uh, usually when we uh, diagnose oral epithelial dysplasia traditionally what we do is we take full thickness lesion so the specimen will be full thickness it include most of the layers of tissue but uh, the recent uh, concept is uh, that is brush biopsy these samples is a non invasive method to determine the presence presence of cellular atypia which will not take the complete uh, full thickness uh, biopsy specimen so it is like firm pressure uh, with a circular brush is applied which will be rotated 5 to 10 times causing light abrasion abrasion is removing a superficial cells of the tissue or the uh, lesion so this cellular materials will be picked up by the brushes and then the same procedure it will be transferred to glass slide then preserved dried and stained and studied so uh, that is a brush biopsy it is again it can't be used as a substitute it can be used as an adjunct okay so these are the basic types of biopsy surgical biopsy which are incisional excisional and punch biopsy then FNAC, exfoliative cytology and brush biopsy. So what are the problems of biopsy? So there are lots of danger associated with biopsy such as spreading of infection, hemorrhage is a big problem and uh, chances of infection and there will be operative trauma. So uh, that's all about biopsy. So I discussed about surgical biopsy, FNAC, exfoliative and brush biopsy. Only thing is little bit confusion about incisional and excisional. This is a part of the lesion. This is complete lesion and this is punch biopsy. A circular blade will be used to take the uh, lesion. So biopsy is uh, very much important in diagnosing a lesion where we suspect malignancy. And on exam point of view, this will be asked as a short essay or short note like incisional excisional punch biopsy and exfoliative cytology is a commonly asked short note so i'll come up with a new topic in uh, surgery thank you